sorry for the lack of actual video other than the one I'm responding to. I have ordered a video camera and will be starting a vlog on here when it arrives, but this required some response. First, a bit of my background. I hold a grudge against the Mormon Church for ruining my childhood. Thus, I am not addressing this in support of the religion in any way. I am an atheist now and prefer people choose based on facts. So here goes. Yes, there is a tenet of the deity named God by most religions in spite of the fact that God is a title, not a proper name. I hate to point this out. Well, that's a lie. I love pointing this out, actually. But all the origins of the deity is up for grabs. Unlike science, religion is up for the interpretation, and since no evidence can be given or supported, this means that any idea of origin of the deity is permissible. This in no way invalidates the religious belief. Sorry, but this is no crazier than saying that the deity just popped into existence before time and space even existed. Well, so? Everyone aspires to greatness. This is a drive innate in all life. We fight to be on top. We fight to be better than we are. It is this innate desire to be more than we are, which has allowed us to achieve such awesome advances, like landing on the moon. They merely offer a new level of achievement in the life after death. Why this surprises anyone is beyond me. And it also in a way invalidates the religion as being Christian. I will demonstrate this later on. As for the God is only an exalted man, this is a false premise. The reality being that the deity had achieved his level himself. This actually offers not only hope to the follower that they are not helpless, it also demonstrates a humility with the deity, making the God easier to associate with. This is a wash, and not indicative of straying from Christianity, nor does it invalidate the beliefs in any way. If anything, it encourages followers to strive for perfection. This quote is just quote mining, so I will not elaborate beyond saying that you should probably read all his statements and, to coin a phrase from the religious people, keep it in context. How is this any different than any other Christian myth? I don't get why this would be an issue. The God created all life, therefore all humans and spirits are its children. Therefore Jesus and Satan would be brothers. Semantics are key here. It's simply solidifying the relationship and level of relation to the Father that is called God. The point is worded incorrectly. It was not exactly Quakers, the cult. He was saying that there were similarities. Thus, I will not address it without more clarification of your point. The preacher shown in the original does point out why they are Christians. The term Christian has been broadened by the cults of the world to include more as to attempt to create solidarity, with the intent of attempting to push back the growing numbers of those who are no longer ascribing to it. Mormons do believe that Jesus is the Savior, sent by the Abrahamic God, mentioned in the Bible. But they differ in how things work on a level that no Christian cult, not Baptist, not Protestant, or any other cult will ever agree on anyway. To say they are not Christian is much like saying that none of the others are either. There are hundreds of Christian cults, all of which disagree on many things, with only one common link, that Jesus is the Savior sent by their God. Beyond that, the similarities end. The, so yes, they are Christians. As crazy as they are, as strange and different as they are, they are Christian. 